In 2015, the most popular film by Mexican director Alejandro González Iñárritu, Survivor, was released. The film was nominated for 12 Academy Awards and won three of them. Leonardo DiCaprio for his role was awarded his first Academy Award. Finally, I personally did not think I would live to see this historic moment. It all began way back in 2001, when screenwriter and producer Akiva Goldsman wanted to adapt Michael Pankey's novel about a hunter who survived a grizzly attack. The script has been completely rewritten several times, and for various reasons the production of the movie has been delayed. It wasn't until 2011, when Alejandro Iñárritu was invited to direct, and Leonardo DiCaprio and Sean Penn were brought in as actors, that the ice began to break. However, Penn didn't wait and joined another project, and his place was taken by Tom Hardy. The shooting, which began in September 2014, was supposed to be completed in seven months. But no such luck. The adaptation of one man's ordeal has proved to be almost as much of an ordeal for the entire film crew. Iñárritu made the ambitious decision to shoot Survivor entirely on location, in natural light and in chronological order. The Mexican flat-out refused to use green screen backgrounds, believing that in this case they would have shot plastic crap. Well, we don't know about that, but his dedication definitely paid off. DiCaprio supported the idea, the producers and the studio agreed. The film was shot mostly in Canada, a bit in Argentina and in the USA. The approach and the story demanded a strong team. The cinematographer was Emmanuel Lubetsky, who had previously won an Oscar for Gravity and Birdman. As for the role of the production designer, Jack Fisk was chosen, the man who had built the sets for Oil and the Tree of Life. By the way, in the interviews the authors often mentioned that the biggest problem was transportation of the group and equipment to the filming site. Oftentimes suitable locations were in the middle of nowhere, and at least 40% of the time was spent daily on delivery by helicopter. Taking into account the refusal to use lighting equipment and very short daylight time, the crew had no more than 5 to 6 hours left for shooting. And when blue hour was required, the shooting session lasted for an hour and a half. However, Iñárritu did not waste the rest of the day, devoting a lot of time to preparation and rehearsals. At the same time, the director did not limit himself to the number of takes, so some scenes, such as the battle between hunters and Indians, were filmed for two weeks. Another major obstacle was a conflict in the team. Because of the difficult conditions, the ever-changing schedule and Iñárritu's demanding nature, there was a lot of turnover in the project. Unsuccessful organization of the work led to dismissal of one of the producers, James Scotchdoppel. There was also a conflict with Tom Hardy, who refused to perform stunts himself. Therefore, shooting was interrupted several times, and instead of May 2015, ended only in August. The budget, meanwhile, increased more than twice, from $60 million to $135 million. All the decorations were initially built as mock-ups. One of the centerpieces of the decoration was the set of the vast Kiowa fort, built by hand from harvested wood, according to drawings preserved from 1820. Now that's what I call historical accuracy. Now the most interesting part. To meet the need for natural light, Jack Fisk built two identical mirror image buildings at the fort, one facing east for morning shots and the other facing west for daylight shots. We can be sure that this feat of ingenuity saved an ungodly amount of money. Moreover, the production designer intentionally distorted historical facts. Namely, he made windows in the houses of the fort, which in reality did not exist. On top of that, the windows were lead-lined to increase transparency, and the roofs were demountable. All this was done with the intention of shooting in natural sunlight. But the Pawnee Indian village was set up in a studio pavilion in Los Angeles, not in Canada. Yet, no chroma key was used. DiCaprio said that the biggest test for him was his appearance. It took him four to five hours every day to put on plastic makeup representing his wounds and the beard which he had to grow for six months terribly interfered in bad weather and required careful care. Another challenge for DiCaprio was the small number of lines. While the actor usually gets the roles of quite talkative characters, here he only uttered a dozen and a half phrases. 
Originally there were more, but upon reading the script, DiCaprio asked to reduce his words. It helped emphasize the character and complicated the transfer of his emotional state. Which in hindsight makes perfect sense. It's now hard to imagine the hunter talking more. In addition to the overlays on the face and body, the artist made silicone limbs, which are broken by the beast in the story. Plus, they made a moulage of the horse, in which the main character slept. Although Inyiritu refused to use chroma key and visual effects, some of the scenes would not have been possible to film without graphics. First of all, it concerns the episode with the attack of a grizzly bear. To create it, the authors consulted zoologists and watched dozens of terrible videos of fights between people and bears. As a reference, they chose the video showing an animal in the zoo attacking a poor fellow who has fallen into its enclosure. This footage convinced the filmmakers once more that the scene should be made as if it were a single shot. Firstly, it provides realism. According to Emmanuel Lubetsky, similar episodes in other films are created using animatronics and jump cuts, which breaks the immersion. Secondly, the single shot creates a sense of continuity and heightens the tension. And good God is the resulting scene tense. It took the stuntman several months to study, stage and practice the choreography of the predator and the victim. On the set, the scene was made with the help of ropes that moved DiCaprio around, while stuntmen gripped the actor where paw wounds and bites were supposed to be. That must have looked unfittingly comical. The trees into which the actor crashes were made of rubber and later textured. In post-production, the ILM studio specialists removed the cables and replaced the stuntman with an animated beast. And did one hell of a job. In addition to the bear, CGI was used to create a herd of buffalo, the scene where the hero and the horse fall down the cliff, and the passing comet. The costumes created by Jacqueline West were also designed to fit the era. Every element, from moccasins and hats to uniforms and fur coats, was sewn and textured according to historical drawings and descriptions. And because of the heavy wear and tear and harsh conditions, most of the actors got six copies of each costume. If you think that's a lot, DiCaprio had 20, including several versions of soaked fur coats that basically never dried out. The film grossed $533 million. During the screening, there were wails and cries of dissatisfaction from the audience. And some critics even left the theater, finding the movie too bloody and unnecessarily violent. And what do you think of the film? I personally enjoyed it thoroughly. And that is all for today. Please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and write your comments down below. Thank you for your attention.